Uh, good morning, everyone. It's really nice to see you all here today, and we welcome you to Bethel um, on this lovely Sunday morning. Uh, it's not sunny, but maybe it will be later. Um, whether you're here or in, like in the building or whether you're online, we just welcome you to our church this morning. Um, this morning, in addition to being a, a visiting person on this team, it's really wonderful to um, hang out with these young people. They make me feel so youthful. Um, but in addition to being able to hang out with them, they picked some really great songs, so I look forward to leading you in worship. And uh, we also have a guest pastor today who's coming to us via video, um, and uh, his titled uh, message is Achieving or Receiving, and it's by uh, Reggie Smith. And Pastor Reggie is the Director of Diversity for the Christian Reformed Church. Um, so uh, we, we look forward to hearing the message that he has prepared for us as well. So I invite you to stand, whether you are here, uh, whether you're at home, if you're able, and join us in our first song, which is Blessed Be Your Name. All right. Streams of love. 
Our call to worship today comes from Psalm 124. If the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel say, if the Lord had not been on our side when the people attacked us, they would have swallowed us alive with their, when their anger flared against us. The flood would have engulfed us, and the torrent would have swept over us. The raging waters would have swept us away, and praise be to the Lord, who has not let us be torn by their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the fowler's snare, the snare that has been broken, and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Would you please join me in prayer? God in heaven, thank you for your care over us in this past week, and thank you that our help is in your name. We pray for your presence in our lives and in this service, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm Randy Smith, and I'm the director of diversity for the Christian Reformed Church in North America. Here God's greeting to you, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And may his spirit be with us during this time of diving into his word. In Jesus' name, amen.
Let us as broken vessels go to our Lord in prayer. Lord, for the prayers said aloud and for the prayers that are silent, we thank you for being a loving God who hears. For the cries of frustration, of fear, of pain, the cries of grief, the cries that are shared and the cries that are quiet, 
we thank you for being our comforter. How big, how wonderful you are to know our inward beings, that you know the answers to the questions we didn't even know we had, as well as the questions we struggle with continually. That in your wisdom, you laid out the plan for us. You give us heavenly direction, and when we choose to follow your will and way, there is life and blessing. Forgive us, Lord, when we choose to follow our own hearts instead of following your heart. Our sinful hearts will lead us astray, but your heart of love and mercy and truth will be the light for our path. Give us the desire to pursue you and your wonderful ways. Bring truth to our spirits that we will discern what is of you and what is of the enemy. Protect us from any plan other than the plan that comes from you. May your purposes and will prevail. Lord, in this heart position, we lay our burdens at your feet, the things of this world that are difficult and painful. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ across the world. We pray for Haiti and the violence, poverty, and chaos they are dealing with in their government and people. With the shocking assassination of their president, their world has been rocked again. Father, it will take a miracle of supernatural intervention to right the wrong in this country. We pray for an inflowing of your Holy Spirit to take back territory lost to their false religions. We continue to pray for our world in dealing with the COVID pandemic. We pray for mercy from the infections but we also pray for your glory to be manifest in this time. What do we need to take from this, Father? We know you do not stop talking to us or instructing us, even in times of adversity. So we pause and reflect and ask you to teach us, your children, more of who you are during this time of stress and uncertainty. Strengthen our faith and trust, we pray. We pray for our close church family that need you for physical healing. Lord, we pray you cover them with your Holy Spirit. We pray for Anne as she goes in for surgery this week. Be near her in body and spirit. For Kevin as he anticipates treatment in August. For Sylvia and Marlon going through treatment and recovery. For young Syl as she heals from her radiation treatments and for Harry as he awaits test results and next steps. Lord, we put them all in your hand with faith and expectation that you will do what is best and right for each of them. Give them the eyes to see you, the mouths to praise you, the hands to serve you, and the heart to follow you, even in this difficult time. We pray for your Spirit's anointing on our church, for our church leaders and staff, and our congregation. May we keep our eyes on you, our ultimate pastor and shepherd. Lead and guide our congregation and make our paths straight for Jesus' sake. We are more than this building. We are more than a council. We are more than programs. We are followers of Jesus Christ and children of God. May we live out this identity in all that we do and all that we say, and all that we think. May we live our lives in praise that we find in Psalm 145. We will exalt you, our God the King. We will praise your name forever and ever. Every day we will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty, and we will meditate on your wonderful works. They tell of the power of your awesome works, and we will proclaim your great deeds. They celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate slow to anger, and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All your works praise you, Lord. 
your faithful people extol you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might so that all people may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does. The Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and faithful in all he does. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. Amen. Our text comes from Mark chapter 1, verses 35 through 39. Hear the word of the Lord. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place to pray. Simon and his companions were looking for him. When they found him, they exclaimed, everybody's looking for you. Jesus replied, let us go somewhere else to a nearby village so that I can preach also there. That is why I've come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. Some years ago, I observed a survey done for 600 students, high school students in Rochester, New York. And they asked them two questions. The first question was, if you could push a magic button, a magic button to be either beautiful, smart, or strong, or famous, what do you think most of them picked? The answer, they all wanted to be famous. And when they asked them a second question, who would you rather have dinner with? And you know who the winner was? Jennifer Lopez then Jesus, and then Paris Hilton. At least Jesus got second place. When you think about this text, everyone was looking for Jesus. Jesus was now famous because he was driving out demons. People were attached to his preaching. Everybody wanted a piece of Jesus. Instead of running towards them, he ran from them. And that is strange because if Jesus wants everyone to understand and to get in on his message, wouldn't he have done all that he can to raise his popularity numbers? Wouldn't he have gone on social media and hit all of the spots, whether that's Twitter or Facebook or Instagram? Wouldn't he have taken all kinds of invitations and interviews because he was now a superstar and yet he does the opposite. He runs from it, then running towards it. He chooses solitary, then the crowd. What is going on here? You see, Jesus is trying to teach us something about not who he is, but who God is. And when he teaches us about who God is, we're not trying to pull up our numbers or to boost up our ego. But what he's trying to do is bring us closer to who God is, the God that has been dying to love us. One of the people of whom I have spent a lot of time reading over these past years is Craig Barnes, who is now the president of Princeton Theological Seminary. And he said something very interesting. He said, you can either live your life in two ways in terms of your approach to God. You can either achieve your life or you can receive your life. If you try to achieve your life, then your constant companion will be complaint. Because you see, 
there never be enough of trying to achieve your own life. You, you will continue to see yourself as a self-help project. You'll keep trying to win God's favor, win the Lord's approval. You'll keep trying to do this gerbil in the wheel. If you think that you would just do a little bit more, then possibly you can get God's approval or even Jesus' approval. You can almost in some way try to earn God's love. And maybe for some of us who are hearing this right now, you're tired, you're burnt out. The last 18 months have been brutal. And now you're tired, you're burdened. Because trying to achieve your life hasn't quite been working out for you. Barnes says there is a second way. If you approach God in terms of gratitude, and if you approach God in terms of gratitude, then this will be what your companion is. Grace. Grace will be your companion on your right and your left. All the other blessings, heaven and earth, thrown in at the same time. Because when you try to live your life by grace and gratitude, there's no chasing. There's no running after. We see this in Jesus as he steals away. He goes to a solitary place to lift us up to the Father. Because he's trying to say something very powerfully to us. I've been dying to love you just as you are, not as, not as an achievement, but rather as a gift. You see, Jesus' main goal was to be our priest. And basically what the priest does is that they pray on our behalf. They pray for us. They bring us before the Lord. That is what Jesus is trying to do as he is stealing away to those solitary places in order to get on a personal level, on a personal basis with the Father again. He knows that other people are looking for him, but he wants to have an audience of one, not a crowd of 5,000. And what a priest does is that they bring us before the Lord. And think of this as the Lord doing something powerfully in our lives. Let me give you four ways of kind of thinking about that. Think of Jesus on his knees. Jesus on his knees praying before the for the Father of saying that if I bring these people before you on the ground at the human level, a part of the human condition, then he understands what we go through. He understands our issues. He understands our pains. He understands our disappointments. He understands the struggles in which we go to. We don't have to hide it because Jesus comes down to our level. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Or Jesus lifting up his hands, lifting us up to the Lord. Some of us are tired and burdened and weary, and maybe we don't have a whole lot of energy for a whole lot of things, let alone for work and for family. And for church, Jesus lifts us up in those solitary places because he's known that we ran out of energy and there's not enough pills, there's not enough PD light, there's not enough energy drink, there's not even enough coffee, no matter how expensive it is, that will get us over the hump. We need someone, we need a savior to lift us up to bring us up to where the Lord is, who knows when we are out of gas. But also, Jesus lifts us up with his hands. In hands and debt, it says to us, I know your struggles. I know your heartaches. I know your pain. I know exactly what you've been going through. And I'm here to help. I'm here to save you. While I'm here in this solitary place, I'm praying on your behalf. I'm being your priest when you want me to be a celebrity. And I don't want to be a celebrity, Jesus says. I want to be your savior. 
your Lord, the one whom you call out in the dark of night, in those painful moments, I will hear and I will answer and I will act because I love you that much. Yes, the Lord has been dying to love you. Why do we work so hard for what our Lord gives us for free? So we have a savior who prays on our behalf, who is even right now, who sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. He is there praying for you right now. There's not another thing that you can do. Not another thing, beloved. Because Jesus is praying for you. He knows what you're going through. And he knows all of us. As John Calvin said so many years ago, we are all in the hospital of sinners and we need the great physician to minister to us during all of those times when we are out of energy and out of ideas and out of answers. There's something else too. In that same survey, when those teenagers were asked, well, why did you answer that way? Most of those teenagers were lonely, depressed, carrying heavy burdens. And they said something very powerfully. And they asked, why did you pick the answers that you picked? And the majority of them said this. They didn't think anyone was on their side. They didn't think anyone was on their side. I can imagine for a lot of the people whom Jesus drove out demons, preached in their villages, before he came, there were not a whole lot of people on their side. And maybe you feel like that today. Maybe you feel like there's not an awful lot of people on your side. Yes, family and friends and loved ones and church members. But when you go to bed at night, you still feel alone. You still feel you are by yourself. So maybe we're not, we're not much different than these young people who are supposed to have the whole world and life before them. And yet at the same time, they didn't feel that anyone was on their side. That is why the Lord has come into the world. He's come because he said, I am on your side. I am in your corner. I believe in you. Even when you feel like that you are still trying to achieve your life rather than trying to receive your life. Oh, dear, dear one, receive your life again. Open up your hands, open up your heart, open up your life. Don't try to achieve your life. And that at the end of the day that you lift up these trophies and say, now I'm worthy of your love. No, you didn't have to win another trophy. You didn't have to bring home another participation award. You didn't have to do anything because the Lord is on your side. He promised you that. He promised he's on your side. And so I just stopped by here just to remind you the Lord is on your side. He is your cheerleader. He is your healer. He is your savior. He has not forgotten about you. And he promises, I will never leave you, nor ever forsake you. This is the promise our Lord makes to us. Well, imagine that as you are sitting right now in your pew or in your seat or wherever you're at, listening to this sermon, believe this. Open your heart, 
open your life. The Holy Spirit is nudging you to believe these words again, afresh and anew. The Spirit is nudging you. I am on your side. Hold that, believe that, because it's true. That your only comfort in life and death, hallelujah, that you're not your own. That you belong, body and soul, life and in death, to our faithful Savior, your Savior, Jesus Christ. That not a hair can fall from your head without him knowing about it. That even during those times when you feel alone and depressed, uneasy and confused, even that will work for your salvation. So believe, believe we have a Savior who was on our side and who is praying right now for your healing and for your forward movement in the spirit of our Lord. May God add a blessing. May God bless you as you go forward knowing he's in your corner. Believe it.
receive God's greeting to you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his presence upon you and smile upon you and know that he is on your side because he gives you his peace. Amen.